Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Chapter One Read Aloud. Today, I decided to pick a book from the shelf that is relatively new to our library, but has not been checked out yet. So I thought I'd highlight it. This is the book, Some Kind of Hate. Uh, it's an interesting book for the day and age we are in. Declan Taylor is furious at the world. After winning state as a freshman starting pitcher, he accidentally messes up his throwing arm. Despite painful surgery, surgery and brutal physical therapy, he might never pitch again. And instead of spending the summer with his friends, Declan is forced to get a job to help his family out. On top of that, it seems like his best friend, Jake, is flirting with Declan's crush and always ditching him to hang out with the team or his friends from synagogue. So Declan ends up playing a lot of imperialistic empires online and making new friends. It's there he realizes he's been playing with Finn, a kid from his class. Finn is the first person who might be just as angry as Declan. He gets it. As the two spend more time together, Finn also introduces Declan to others who understand what it's like when the world is working against you, no matter how much you try. How white kids like them are being denied opportunities because others are manipulating the system. And the more time Declan spends with Finn, the more he sees what they're saying is true. So when his new friends decide it's time to fight back, Declan is right there with them, even if it means going after Jake and his family. And each new battle for the cause makes Declan feel in control of his, eight, his rage, channeling it into saving his future. But when things turn deadly, Declan is going to have to decide just how far he'll go and what he's willing to sacrifice. So I actually want to read you the author's note really quickly before I read you the first chapter this time, because I think it's important. Some Kind of Hate was a hard book to research and write, perhaps the most challenging and personal for me. Of all the books I've written, I want to give you fair warning. It isn't an easy book to read either. The contents include white nationalist ideas based on anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, Islamophobia, racism, misogyny, and violence. I do not condone these ideas. In fact, they go against everything I believe in. They are included for two reasons, because they are necessary to understanding Declan's journey and because it's important to recognize coded language and rhetoric used to promote hateful ideas when you recognize when you encounter it in everyday life and online spaces. Reading about these ideas might cause you some discomfort, and that's normal. I'd be more worried if it didn't. We aren't supposed to feel comfortable when we encounter those we hate in entire groups of people based on religion, ethnicity, skin color, gender, or sexual orientation. The danger is in allowing such ideas to be normalized. If it makes you uncomfortable to read about this kind of hate, try to imagine how it feels to be the target of it in your life, not just in a book. Still, if at any point the discomfort starts to feel overwhelming, please put this book down. Take care of yourself. You can always come back to it if you choose to. As always, thank you for reading my books. All right, so um, we are going to read the first chapter, which is in the first section called Freshman Year, June, July, August. And this one is uh, titled Declan. It goes back and forth between different characters. This one is specifically Declan. The pop of the glove is my favorite sound in the world, especially when it's followed by an umpire calling strike after I've thrown the pitch. I could listen to it all day. We're warming up for the most important game of the season. The Stafford's Corner Sabres are about to play the Tilbury Tigers for the New York State High School Baseball Championship. That's it, Declan. Give that arm a rest. Coach Chris Goldie shouts out. Just a few more, Coach, please. I beg him. A few, Coach K says, but don't push it. I won't, I promise. I have to protect my pitching arm because baseball is life. Not only that, it's the ticket out of my town, where if you drive not too far in any direction, you'll find a house with a barn with peeling paint and a caved-in roof about to fall down and not much else. I make one more warm-up toss. My best friend and practice partner, Jay Clear, catches it effortlessly. If anyone on this team knows me, it's him. We met playing t-ball, and we spent more hours playing together than I can count. He rushes over, throws an arm around my neck, and pulls the rim of my baseball cap down over my face. Nice job, Deck. Keep it, door, keep it up during the game. I will if coach puts me in, I say in a low voice, taking off my cap and running a hand through my hair. My parents have been after me to get a haircut, but I'm superstitious and won't cut it until after the championship. Come on, Deck, you know we will, Jake says, detangling me to wipe the sweat off his face with his arm. Mateo is a sophomore. He's got seniority. Yeah, but you're the closer, Jake says. You're the closer, you're the, Jake says. You're the guy with the golden arm. 
and hair. He reaches his hand out to mess with my hair, but I bat it away. It's not even worth trying to retaliate because his dark curls are definitely a matted mess under his own hat. Before he can open his mouth, I say, if you call me Goldilocks, I'm going to beat the crap out of you, Jake. He flashes me a grim. Oh, no, you won't, he says, because you want to win. And for that to happen, you need me at first base, Goldilocks. I try to punch his arm, but he's too quick for me. He's already taken off running and his laughter floating back to me on the breeze. Yo, Goldilocks, is Jake being an idiot again? One of my other friends, Cody Miller, asks when he walks over, you can smell the sunscreen on him from like a mile away. He's got that seriously pale ginger look going on, so it doesn't take much to turn him into a lobster. I grit my teeth. Stop calling me that. Cody grins and says, I'll stop if you win us the championship. You know I'm going to try. Yo, Declan, over here. It's hard to miss my twin sister, Kaylee's voice from the stands. I see her waving like the weirdo she is, next to my parents, who have actually taken the day off work to watch me play in the championship. June is one of my mom's busiest time as a hairstylist, and with proms and weddings, and dad's been taking all the shifts he can at Pinnacle Metalworks because there's a new general manager being transferred in from out of state to streamline production which apparently is corporate speak for layoffs. My parents had been even more stressed out about money than usual. They missed the quarterfinal and semifinal games, but at least they're here now. Mom waves and dad shouts, knock them dead, Deck. Coach has put me in. Otherwise, they took off work, for, has to put me in. Otherwise, they took off work for nothing. Jeff Seal pitches the first three innings and gives up two runs, but so does the Tilbury pitcher. Coach and Mr. Morrison are conferring about who to put in to relieve him. I'm gutted when coach calls out, Molina, you're up. By the bottom of the fifth, we're ahead by one run, and I'm starting to feel sick to my stomach as I pace the dugout. Is coach going to let Mateo pitch for the rest of the game without even giving me a chance? I might be a freshman, but I've proved myself in the quarterfinal and semifinals. We're still ahead by the time Mateo strike out two, struck out two batters, but I can tell he's flagging, and the bases are loaded. It's my turn. It's got to be. Coach doesn't even look at me. I hold my breath as Mateo winds up for the pitch. As soon as the ball leaves his hand, I know we're in trouble. Sure enough, instead of the pop of the ball in the catcher's glove, there's a loud ping of it hitting the aluminum bat. It sails over the outfield for a homer. I kick a helmet, but even the satisfying thunk of hitting it, of hitting the wall, doesn't make me feel any better. We're going to lose, and I'm just standing around the sidelines when I could, when I could win this for us. By the time Mateo strikes out the next batter, our dugout is like a wake. Mateo comes in from the mound, pulling his cap down over his face. Coach squeezes his shoulder, then shouts the five glorious words I've been waiting for. Taylor, you're up next inning. That's it. That is the first chapter of the book, Some Kind of Hate. Come check it out in the library, and I'll see you next time on Chapter 1 Reload.